Someone's brought a smile to the former boy wonder. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Death of the Family Nightwing. Dick Grayson began his crime-fighting career as the original Robin, Batman's protege and crime-fighting partner. An expert acrobat and skilled fighter, Dick eventually left the nest and ventured out on his own as a new hero called Nightwing. His childhood experiences as a circus acrobat and trapeze artist make him extremely agile. He's a superior fighter and a highly skilled martial artist who has been personally trained by Batman. Nightwing is keen detective, natural leader, and a strategist with advanced knowledge of a variety of technologies. Ooh, who says laughter is the best medicine? Before we get a closer look at the DC Multiverse Nightwing from Death of a Family, the first thing, as you can see, I'm already starting to do it. I'm hovering. I'm hovering. The first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall he actually stands. So stopping it, making a beep, beep, beep. According to the readouts, Nightwing stands 7 inches exactly. Well, 7.1 if we want to be closer to that. We can switch it over to centimeters, revealing in this case that the figure is, is exactly 18 centimeters, 18 centimeters tall. For this review, it certainly would have been helpful to be able to bring in the original Nightwing from DC Multiverse, as both these figures share the same mold. Couldn't find it, however, so we're going to bring in a couple of other figures instead. We're going to bring in the Batman, because I feel like that's a good comparison after all. And speaking of turned boy wonders, we can bring in one of the three Robins that McFarlane Toys has released before. The distorted face of Nightwing is a lot bigger than one of the three Robins we looked at before, but he's about the same height as the regular Batman. Though when you're looking at the two, even though their proportions are about the same, Nightwing seems to have a much bigger melon sitting on his neck. Checking out the figure's accessories, starting first, he comes in clue with a trading card. A rather fine-looking trading card featuring artwork of Nightwing on the front. Though you won't find a smile from ear to ear in this case, you've got a, just a regular Nightwing. I have not picked up, though, up to this point, the two-pack Nightwing and Red Hood release, which I believe is just essentially this figure with a different head sculpt. Because of that, I can't 100% tell you if this is the same card that came included with that two-pack. If you did pick up that two-pack that came with the Red Hood, and again, the only reason why I didn't is because I already had the regular costume Nightwing, and I already had picked up a Red Hood, and I don't think the Red Hood was any bit different. But if you have picked it up, let me know if this is the same card that came included with that two-pack. And it does have some nice artwork on the front, though if it is just reused, it would have been nice if they had, you know, given us a different face on the front or a different picture of Nightwing. But certainly on the back, it gives you all your source material. Source is Nightwing number one, Comics 2011. Real name is Richard Dick Grayson. Height is 5 foot 10 and weight is 175 pounds. You can either pause and read this for yourself or you can go back to the beginning of this review. It would be a bit strange to probably do that right now. At the beginning of this review, I've already read that. A service I was more than happy to provide. So go ahead and put the card to the side for the time being. Eventually, that will find its way into the trading card sheets that I'm doing for really all the figures, cards that McFarlane Toys have been putting out with the DC Multiverse. They go right into the sleeve as soon as I'm finished the review. Looking at the other things that come in clear with Nightwing. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time because I always feel like I say the same thing about these stands. It's a black stand with a DC logo down below and a peg up the top corner. I'll just leave it at that. Because like I said, it's the same stand we've gotten with all the other figure releases. Still, like the fact we get a stand, I'm not finding fault at all the fact that we actually get one. I'm going to put that to the side as well. Then for his accessories to come included with the figure, because again, this is just a re-released figure with a brand new head sculpt, the accessories are also going to be the same. I'm going to go ahead and pick these ones up right now, and apologies in advance for the very bent nature of these. These are his Eskrima sticks. Now, I probably will end up submerging this in hot water. It's a very dense plastic, but unfortunately, like I said, the time it's spent in his plastic prison it has gotten quite, quite warped. So I'm going to have to just put these in hot water, I think. Let's turn these around. Put these in hot water. See if I can bend that plastic back into shape and make these look a little bit more straighter. I feel like if you're going to have Eskrima sticks, actually him displayed with them, you'd want to have them at least straight. You can, of course, take the figure. You probably already know where this is going to be going. Take the sticks, and you can actually fit them into his hand. I would hope that that's no surprise. You do that on one side, and you can also do it on the other side as well. 
like that. One other thing that's neat about this figure, though, is that you can also take the same sticks I just finished putting into his hands, spin the figure around, and locate it on the back. He has two little hooks, not for hanging jackets necessarily, but you can actually take then the escrima sticks and just hook them into place. I guess you could either do it either way. You could have them sticking more so up like this, or you can have them facing the opposite way. I probably would say choose. It would just look rather awkward if you have one up, one down. Make some decision for yourself. That's neat. I like that. Unfortunately, it will mean you will want to be careful of these. This is softer plastic. Certainly don't want these to be breaking off at all. That being said, let's get a closer look at Nightwing. Stating already that unfortunately I couldn't find the original Nightwing that I had would, would basically be this figure. I think the plastic color was slightly lighter than this. And then the crest that goes across his chest from shoulder to shoulder would have been all blue. You can feel free if you want to go and check my review of that original Nightwing if you'd like. And again, stating earlier, I never picked up the two-pack that had the Nightwing with this same crest in the red that came along with the, the red hood because I already had picked up the red hood. I might still maybe pick up. I, I don't know. Because essentially, if we're getting the exact same body and it's really only just the head that's the difference of the two... Do I really want to spend the money to get a two-pack to get a Red Hood I already have? I don't think it's any any bit different. And to get a Nightwing that I already have the body of. Same head. And of course, I would have the same body for this particular. Anyways, leave it with me. Leave it with me. We'll think about it later. I guess we'll talk a little bit about the thing that's unique about this particular figure. And that's the head sculpt. The Joker-fied version of Nightwing does look rather disturbing. I do like that the smile drawing attention to the fact that it's lopsided. It's not the same on both sides. I do like the fact it sticks up just a little higher on the one side than the other. The teeth look quite gross. I'm not sure why everybody that gets Joker-fied, I'm going to just call that that's what Joker does to these people. He turns them into, of course, versions of himself. Why does it automatically turn their teeth really gnarly? I can't imagine that Nightwing is neglecting his teeth, not choosing to brush them. Why all of a sudden, when he's turned into the Joker, does his teeth look like a row of corn? It's like he's got a cob of corn sitting in his mouth right now. That's disturbing. The paint is really quite good on it, for what little they actually use. I'm trying to actually see, I think the head has actually been fully painted. It does seem like that's awfully thick white paint, and it really isn't the plastic. The sculpt on it is rather nice. I like the way that the cheeks have accordioned, the, accordioned them, their way up to the ear here. So it sort of just looks like multiple folds of skin. That is a stretched out smile. I also like the fact that the cheeks are a little higher up, making his eyes a little bit more squinty. Almost like he's plotting something. The hair is sculpted quite nicely as well. I mean, it's a figure really that if you don't mind the idea that so much of it was reused from previous figures... This is really the only thing that's exclusive to it, if, again, you've picked up those other two Nightwings. But I wouldn't say necessarily it's a figure to pass on if you like the looks of these Joker-fied characters. And that's, again, like a really nice-looking head sculpt. The hair is messy and tussled, as you can see. It's not close to his head in all the cases. There's a few little strands that stick up, and that's a nice touch as well. Very little in the way of paint that they've actually added to the hair. It looks like they just decided to go with jet black and leave it at that. I guess I would much rather prefer that than maybe just these little streaks of blue that sometimes figures have and sometimes toy companies don't know when to pull that back and really when to stop. You know, that was the stopping point. No more blue, no more blue. And then before you know it, it looks like they have blue hair. I guess one little critique I could make is the fact that the coloring of his neck isn't the same as his face. I wish that that was still the consistent same level of white, but it's not, like I said, it's certainly not a deal breaker for the figure. As for the rest of it, this is basing it off his original body proportions that the original Nightwing had. He sort of has a bit of a, I don't want to say like a sloppy body, but there's there's a bit of a flatness to his body that some of the older DC multiverse figures have. And even though this is more of a newer release, it sort of inherits a lot of that because of, the, because of the fact that they're using that same body. The crimson red crest is a nice touch. It doesn't fully connect, of course, because you've got the cup joint on either side. Unfortunately, because of that, it breaks it up, and I wish it was carried across. If it may have involved them having to paint this area of the shoulder, I wish they could have done that. Because like I said, I mean, unless you have the arms out, 
The arms can sometimes fool the eye to make you think that it's all one connected piece. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do away with the cup joint. There's sometimes these figures have worked better with them. Other times, like the animated figures, I feel like probably could have just done away with them because it makes the shoulders way too big. As we get a closer look at the figures detailing here, some nice alternating patterns. You've got some meshing here on the inside of his torso. It's not the same on all the places, so that same mesh then continues on on the interior of his legs. And he's got a few little areas there also on the side. One thing that is nice about figures like this is they they find ways to break things up. So if it was simply just, let's say, this smooth plastic here, and it was literally everywhere, it would be a pretty boring looking mold to look at. At least there's things that you can kind of hone in on with your eyes. So there's something to still look at, even though the figure is really all black. The red is carried over down further down below. And again, just using the same Nightwing body we've gotten before. The red is at least cleanly applied. Doesn't look like it's not really messy at all. I thought maybe that the crest was m messy in some places, but I think it's actually the opposite. The corners of where I would think that it probably could have maybe been applied a second coat of paint. Some of it may have something to do with the fact that you're going to be rubbing this back and forth. I'm not really sure if the longevity of the paint is going to be good right around these areas because if you're going to continue to move these arms outward, how much of that is going to be rubbing up against the inside of that socket? Is some of that paint going to chip off? Only time will really tell if that's actually going to be the case. Looking out, the articulation on Nightwing, his head is on a ball joint. But it goes further than just that. So his head rotates all the way around. Of course, it normally does. You can move it up, down, and back and forth. I must say, I really do like the low look of this. The sinister smile is already creepy. But when you've got the head hanging low down like this, it really adds to the, just the level of freakiness when you're seeing this figure sitting on a shelf. In addition to that, though, he actually has a secondary ball joint, drawing everybody's attention right here to his collar. This allows then the neck to also additionally move a little bit beyond the point. And actually, maybe that even helps too to bring the head a little lower than what it normally would be able to pull off by itself. As for the arms, you can bring the arms out beyond the point of a 90 degree, degree angle. You can almost look like he's doing jumping jacks. Now, of course, that also means you can rotate the arms all the way around. Going back to the idea of that socket joint, the socket allows the arms to hinge outward and inward just a little bit more than what traditional ball hinge joints would be, would be able to give you. He does have a swivel at the bicep. He has a double hinge on the elbow. He has the hand articulation, which you can rotate all the way around and back and forth. Nightwing also has an upper torso ball joint. You may or may not like the way these original bodies were sculpted, where it sort of has this kind of looks like a frowning cat. I don't know why I'm looking at that like it's a frowning cat. But it drops down here instead of having it straight across. It's questionable as to whether having it straight across would have been a better looking figure. But I mean, a lot of the older multiverse figures, including Nightwing, seem to have kind of this, I'm just going to say a frowning looking cat. Uh, it doesn't really look like a frowning cat. Lower torso is on a ball joint. Uh, certainly when it comes to his legs, the legs split up. But they are a little on the tight side. And that's to the full extent of what I, I can actually do with the legs. You can bring them, of course, forward and, of course, backwards. You can swivel them slightly at the top of the thigh, double hinge on the knee. When it comes to his lower legs, this is all sculpted, so you can't do anything there. But you can at least move his ankles back and forth, or at least his feet back and forth via those ankles. There isn't a little bit of ankle pivot, and he also does have toe articulation as well. Can't go wrong with a little bit of toe articulation. Even though technically this Nightwing is one that we've gotten before, a triple dip, because it te uh, technically we already got the blue Nightwing, and then technically on top of that, we also got ourselves a two-pack Nightwing that came included with Red Hood. I would almost even say, I mean, it would be on a person-to-person -person basis. Let's just say, let's just throw the, out, the scenario out there, that you already have that first Nightwing. And let's just also throw the scenario out there that you managed to get yourself the two-pack Nightwing that had... Pretty much this exact same body, minus, of course, that weird-looking head. And you already had that figure that came included with the red hood. Would you then pick this figure up again if it was only just a different head sculpt? Again, I would probably leave it to you guys, because some people would just pass on this figure altogether. I may have more invested interest, I think, picking this up, because I hadn't picked up that two-pack before. And because, again, because of those reasons... 
I don't mind the fact that I'm now double dipping getting this figure. If I had picked up that two pack, probably would be a completely different story altogether. Not really a bad looking Nightwing. If you like your Nightwing, of course, with a big giant creepy smile across his face. Again, why does his teeth have to look like a cob of corn after he's been turned by the Joker? Is that a, is that a requirement? Every time somebody gets turned by the Joker, they their teeth have to be gnarly all of a sudden? Anyways, even though this is technically now the third time we've gone around and we've passed the same barn, we just passed that not too long ago, didn't we? McFarlane seems notorious lately for double-dipping or triple-dipping existing molds that have already been released from the DC Multiverse line. I mean, we've now gotten this figure a third time, but at least you get a different head sculpt. Uh, of course, if you did get the two-pack of Nightwing, like I said at the end of this review, maybe you'd be a little less interested in picking this one up, whether it has a creepy face or not. You might just say to yourself, hey, I already, I already have passed that barn and I don't feel like passing it again. I will say at least also to the credit of McFarlane Toys, he's releasing so many figures now. I mean, every time we're picking up a wave, he's already got a new wave already either being announced or hitting store shelves. And some of them, most of them at least, are brand new molds and brand new figures. So if it does mean he has to offset the cost by periodically double dipping to a figure that we have already gotten before and just changing a head, in many cases that seems to be the case lately, changing a different head sculpt or painting it slightly different, if it means that we're going to be getting so many of the other brand new characters, is that really a bad thing at all? If companies want to double dip and triple dip what they already have at their disposal? Maybe not. Maybe not. Overall, at least it's a good Nightwing. If it was just a case where it was the same face as he had before, and maybe, I don't know, they just put blood or something on his face, maybe I would say, ah, I really don't need this. I don't need to see that barn again. But because at least this one has been changed by the Joker, and he's creepy, and he's pale, and he looks very cool and creepy on display, then yeah, I would say this is a great figure to pick up and put on display, even if I had already passed the barn already two times before, even though technically I really only picked up the first Nightwing, so I've only seen that same barn once, one one time before. What do you guys think of the Jokerfied? We're going to just keep calling it that if that's not even the correct way of calling it. What do you guys think of this Nightwing? from Death of the Family, let me know down below in the comments section. And certainly, if you are new to this channel and enjoying all the content you're seeing, hit the subscribe button down below and be sure as well to turn the bell notification on so you get those friendly reminders whenever a new video will be popping up. Just an also FYI, friendly FYI, I'd like to think from this humbled reviewer, there will be new DC Multiverse reviews coming your way. I would like to hope it's going to be of the current wave, but like I said, as quickly as we pick up a wave of new figures, McFarlane either announces or he's released new ones hitting store shelves. It's impossible to catch up unless you have like, like a money tree out in the back. Remember when parents used to say, I'm going to go pick from the money tree? Does anybody say that anymore? Maybe we should bring that back. I'm going to go outside and pick from the money tree. It's right actually by that barn we've passed already two times before. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.